The full-scale war that Russia brought to Ukraine has actively spilled over back into Russian territory. Footage has appeared on social media showing a fragment of an urban battle in the village of Malaya, Loknia, in the Kursk region. The published footage shows Ukrainian troops firing at Russian soldiers with large-caliber guns. The Russians have taken refuge in a two-story house, which is being fired at with tracer sub-caliber rounds from an American Marder infantry fighting vehicle. Footage of the battle was published by the Telegram channel VCHK OGPU, which is close to the Russian security forces. In the video, you can see burning houses and traces of powerful explosions. This is roughly what Ukrainian cities in the east of the country look like after the Russian occupation army launched its offensive. Now, Russians will be able to directly experience the taste of war, which has returned to their country. President Vladimir Putin, meanwhile, promised a worthy response, though the continuing surrenders and loss of territory demonstrate that the Kremlin has yet to formulate an effective counter-attack. About 200,000 Russian civilians have had to be evacuated from their homes so far, and at some point, more of Moscow's forces may have to be pulled from the 500,000 or so Russian troops currently inside Ukraine to try to deliver a knockout blow. Eventually, that could be to Ukraine's advantage, said Lieutenant Colonel Bodan Kratevich, the Chief of Staff of Ukraine's Azov Brigade, who is based on the Eastern Front. The Kursk operation, it's very good and a brave idea, he said. But other problems on the battlefield didn't disappear. It depends on time that we can hold the front line in Kursk. If it will be a long time, I think Russians will start to throw their reserve units from Pokrovsk to Kursk. British military expert Lawrence Friedman, honorary professor of war studies at King's College London, told Liga that Ukraine's ongoing Kursk incursion poses significant problems for Russia, effectively shifting the main battles to Russian territory. Ukraine's incursion into Russia's Kursk Oblast started on the 6th of August, and the Ukrainian forces have been broadening their bridgehead for over a week with Ukraine's commander-in-chief Alexander Syrsky earlier claiming over 1,000 square kilometers of territory inside Russia had been seized. According to Friedman, Ukrainian generals fully understand the risks involved in the Kursk offensive as well as its enormous potential. This creates big problems for the Russians, who turned out to be unprepared to defend their own land, he said. Thousands of protesters gathered outside the Democratic National Convention in Chicago to demonstrate against the Biden administration's position on Israel. Protesters held their march at Union Park in a show of pro-Palestinian solidarity, calling for an end to U.S. funding to Israel. Organizers of those two protests have spent weeks wrangling with city attorneys over permits. A crowd of close to 3,000 people from more than 270 different organizations came together to form the coalition to protest. Chicago police formed a perimeter around the park on foot to contain protesters, with some police personnel on bikes. After hours of peaceful demonstrations, dozens of protesters broke through part of the perimeter security fence, drawing riot police to the site, a Reuters witness said. It initially appeared the first breach had been secured, but another fence was taken down soon afterward. At least four people were arrested, but no protesters got beyond the outer perimeter of the secure zone. The Democratic National Convention security team did not respond to a request for comment on whether the protesters were arrested. Law enforcement personnel are currently on scene and more information will be provided when available, said a Chicago City spokesperson. Demonstrations are expected every day of the convention and, while their agendas vary, many activists agree an immediate ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war is the priority. Pro-Palestinian activists say Harris has been more sympathetic to people in Gaza than Biden has been. Her national security adviser said on X this month that she does not support an arms embargo on Israel. After meeting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu last month, Harris told reporters not only that Israel had a right to defend itself but also in reference to Gaza, we cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering and I will not be silent. Free, 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 